everyone, this is Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you my art journal page for the Pick a Stick Challenge for August. This is my page made with the Tim journal prompts that were drawn using the Sticks of Fate. <laughs> uh, they're, they were tricky this month, uh, for me anyway. I had a little bit of trouble um, coming up with a concept, but I did finally come up with a concept after taking a trip last weekend to um, visit the high country of Arizona and I I got inspired while I was there so that's what my page is about the first prompt was to use book paper so I just have a page torn out of a novel that I've been tearing up to use as book paper I know that I'm going to do something in the center of the page and so I'm not going to put any book paper on that it would just be covered up anyway um, I've kind of made a plan um, Instead of just going for it with the prompts and, you know, seeing where it takes me, I do make a plan now because some of my pages were turning out really weird. <laughs> so I try to think about it before I do it, uh, which isn't necessarily my natural state. Um, the, the paper I'm using is mixed media paper torn out of a spiral journal, and I will be cutting off the, the edge there on the left eventually. So once I was done with the... Uh, gluing on of the book paper using the matte medium I decided I wanted to put some gesso on so I'm using my two inch soft rubber brayer and just some uh, acrylic gesso and that that kind of blends the the pages in a little bit they're not so stark against the background the next step was to add a rub-on and I had these two different packs of rub-ons I didn't really need any of them um, you know, sometimes the sticks of fate say that you need to use something that you really don't think you do need to use. This particular sheet just has some random numbers and words on it that uh, are kind of vintage. So I just decided to put some of them on to add some more visual texture. They don't mean anything. They don't say anything. They're just random. And I had some trouble with it sticking where I didn't want it. I don't use rub-ons and I... I think that they're kind of phasing out the whole product line because you can't really find them anymore from what people have said. So, yeah, that's what I did <laughs> with my rub-ons. Uh, the next prompt was to use a random sentence from a random book. And so I just opened up that same paperback that I've been tearing up. And I found a sentence that says, I didn't say anything, I was just listening. And that kind of related to what my page is about um, about listening to nature, listening to the past, and, um, you know, kind of meditating. So that sentence kind of made sense with the theme. You don't really see it in the end anyway. It's just one little strip of paper. <laughs> the next step was to add a dog image, drawn, stamped, or collaged. So I decided to draw a coyote. I see coyotes out in the wash in the back of my house. Um, well, I don't see them that often. Occasionally I do, but I hear them a lot, especially in the spring when they have puppies and then <laughs> they just bark, 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 oh, bark, 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 bark. They're really cute. So um, I decided that that's what I wanted for my canine. Uh, coyotes and wolves are canines. They're not necessarily tame dogs like we think about, but I wanted it to be... Um, I wanted it, that image to be in the foreground. Now this is where the sticks of fate get tricky because that you have to follow the steps in order. And sometimes the steps are not in the order that you want. <laughs> and when you're making the foreground image and you're making this bright, colorful coyote to go in the foreground, but you haven't finished the background, that's where it gets tricky. So you'll see what I did um, once I get this all colored. I drew it on just regular text weight paper using a soft graphite drafting pencil and then I um, went over it with my pet pens which are India ink pens for illustration but something smeared I don't know if it was on my white eraser I'm, I'm not liking that white eraser very much it's been doing this lately I dried the ink so I don't think it was the ink but I think it's still got some dark stuff on it but it doesn't really matter it's gonna be colored anyway and I'm just I'm making um, 
not realistic colors on my coyote. I want it to be bright and colorful, but colors that you would see in the Southwest. So I've got turquoise, I've got purple, I've got orange, I'm going to use red and yellow. Um, colors that you would associate with the Southwest. And the ink tins pencils, once they're activated with water and dried, then they are permanent. So that's why I use, like to use them in mixed media. They're not regular watercolor pencils because regular watercolor pencils will smear if you put something over the top. And I know that I'm going to collage this on with, with a liquid glue type of situation. So I put my first layer on and then I went back in and added more colors and more definition um, after the first layer was completely dry. That's why I set it with my heat tool because this paper is so lightweight. You know, it's just, it's just printer paper. So it will tear if it's wet and I tried to put another layer of color on top of it, smear all over the place. So I'm just layering on the color but making sure that I dry it completely in between. I could have used watercolor paper or a cardstock or something like that or some more of the mixed media paper. But I had this just sitting there so I grabbed it. It's the leftover piece from the quote that I had printed out to put on the page. I printed it with my printer and then this is the rest of the paper. Might as well use it. Figured that made sense. So my colors on my Coyote maybe don't make sense, <laughs> but they're fun and colorful. I didn't leave any white, however, so I got out some white acrylic paint and decided to add back in some highlights. I have trouble leaving white. I tend to just fill up every single space of things. Um, you know, it's a thing. I need to work on it. <laughs> so this is just plain acrylic paint, titanium white, and I'm just applying it in a few places to try to lighten up the highlighted areas that I meant to have if I would have left them. You know what I mean, if I would have left them. <laughs> it's always a problem. So once this is all dry, I went ahead and added another black line around because I had faded the line a little bit. And this is a food ball pin, a 1.5 millimeter I think millimeter yeah I think so it's a little bit wider than my um, other pen that I had used but it made a nice black line and it was what was laying on the desk so I grabbed it and then I cut this out and so I probably didn't need to really worry too much about the lines because and you know going over the lines because <laughs> I was cutting it out anyway but you know these challenges are a challenge sometimes, and I was worried about the next thing. Then I added some tearing at the bottom. I like to tear paper when I'm going to put it onto something because it helps it blend, and I knew I was going to be blending this out into the background eventually. So what I did was just glue down the bottom part of it, but I left the coyote loose because I know that I still have to put something else in that middle section. So I'm trying to get around the whole going through the steps in order thing by only half gluing it. <laughs> and the next thing is to add a photo. And this is a photo that I took when I was up at, um, on my little driving, my short driving trip that I took up to Flagstaff. And then on the way back, I stopped at this place, which is the Montezuma Castle National Monument. It's near um, Camp Verde, Arizona. And I go here whenever I'm up there. Like if I go up to Sedona, it's a great trip to little day trip from Sedona. I am absolutely fascinated with this place. It is a, a ancestral Pueblo cliff dwelling. And it was made by the Sinagua people around 1100 to 1425 AD and it's kind of like an apartment complex. It's 
complex. It's a, not a castle, really. <laughs> it's 90 feet up on a limestone cliff, and it's been dug out of there. Like, there must have been a natural cave, and they, they made it bigger, and they added their dwelling to it. And it's five stories high, and it's got 20 rooms in it. You can't go up to it. You can't go up there and climb around. You can only see it from a distance. But you come around, you're walking on the path, and you come around this little, little, you know, curved area, and then you see it, and you're just like, wow, that is so amazing. <laughs> so, so amazing. And I love to just sit there, and I, f I feel like I can connect with, nature and ancient people when I sit there it just it's one of my favorite places to go so I always make sure that I go there when I um, am up in that area the next thing to do was to add a quote so of course I did and this is printed off my printer and I'm sticking it down with the soft matte gel again now I wished that this step would have been at the end because then the quote would have stood out nice and bright. But the next step is to add paint with your fingers. Which is something I love to do. But I would have liked to have done it before this. <laughs> you know? You know what I mean? The sticks of fate were not kind this month. So here I am adding acrylic paint with my fingers. I've got some blue for the sky. Um, in the picture, the sky was a gorgeous color. I didn't have exactly that turquoisey blue but this one was pretty close and then I've got some white that I'm blending it in with that was left over from before and then at the bottom I'm gonna use some greens uh, this is uh, fresh lime squeeze lime or something from dilutions and then I've got a couple that's green gold and viridian I think if the other one is viridian green and they're the deco arts media line and I'm just using those three greens and just kind of randomly blending them together to fill in the bottom. Um, the cliff dwelling is along Beaver Creek near Camp Verde, Arizona and so on the other side there's water so therefore there is a lot of bushes and plants at the bottom of the cliff which is probably why they went there because the um, Sanagua people farmed and so they had water they had you know land they had a safe place to go to at night where they were protected by being up on a cliff so it really was probably an excellent place to live for them and not really sure why they left nobody really knows whenever you see these abandoned amazing structures like even in Mexico the Aztec structures and stuff you're just like why did they leave these places are so cool but there must have been a reason just nobody really knows. <laughs> then I just fin finished up with a medium brown tone at the bottom. That's uh, raw sienna, I think. And I also added it kind of around the edges as well, just to make it a little bit look like it was more um, aged paper, if that makes sense. Because I felt like it, that's why. Because I felt like it. <laughs> So for step eight, it is add wings. And I had this tape that came on a package from the Netherlands the other day with uh, some nice ATCs from my friend Gerda Franks. And it had s these cute little birds on it. They probably don't live near Beaver Creek. I mean, I don't know what kind of birds these are, but I don't really care, they're cute birds. So I cut out the birds from the tape and stuck those on in the bushes and trees that are there, which is where they would be if they lived there. There's a blue one and a yellow one and a brownish one. No idea what kind of birds they are. And if I really wanted to go for authenticity, I should have used like a cactus wren or something. But I had them on that piece of tape that I pulled off of her envelope and I thought it was pretty cool. Once I got them cut down, I stuck them down real good with some um, soft gel matte medium right there in the bushes and trees. So that's my wings. <laughs> Step nine is to add a piece of fabric and I had this piece of canvas left over from a project that I did um, covering a journal and I had painted on it with different acrylic paint 
and it just happened to be the right color. So I decided to just make another little sand hill rock thing for the bottom because I didn't know what to do with the fabric, you know? <laughs> Works perfectly fine. It's a piece of canvas, glued it on there. We're all good. And step 10 was to write the lyrics of a song on your page. And as I was driving my four hour drive, I heard the song Cashmere, which is from Led Zeppelin on the radio. And the words to it actually pretty much sum up what it means to me to go and visit this particular place so I decided to use it so I just wrote them in in the sky of the page using a white fine tip Posca pen and it, it you know visually maybe not that attractive but it kind of looks like clouds in the sky a little bit maybe and if you really want to you can read them and I also just put them on the screen so you could read them then to finish up, I used my white pen to add a few highlights around. Um, and then I got out my black fine tip Posca pen and went around the quote so that it could stand out a little bit more. It's got green paint all over it, but I couldn't keep it white while well, finger painting. <laughs> so, And then, of course, a little border because it just needed a border, some kind of border. So I just used a few lines with my fine tip Posca around the border using a straight edge. Worked out fine. I thought it looked good. And then my final thing was to just highlight some of the branches and kind of bring them in to the foreground and draw them down a little bit so that it looked a little bit more connected. I thought it helped the overall composition. So that's it for me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, share. All those things really help me out with my channel, and that would be really great. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.